Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawashai, Bahasham, Rakahakudash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahawa, Bahasham, Yahawashai. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule and teach well. And peace and salutations to you, sincere Akiam out there, pushing this word and truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. This is the Brother Raya with another video, and I'm going to start it off in Isaiah 66, verse 15. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And the chariots are the heavenly vehicles of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, which people ignorantly refer to as so-called UFOs. And the chariots are coming to do two things. To save the elect of the nation of Israel, the 144,000 and the rest of the righteous one third, as well as make war against the heathen nations, chiefly of the Edomites or the so-called white people who are the heathen nation that's in rulership right now. And Yahabushai Hamashayak, the son of the Most High, whom the world ignorantly refers to as so-called Jesus Christ, is going to be leading the charge. And in this video, I'm going to play a short clip that the elder brother Hawaii of uh, the Raleigh, North Carolina camp posted on the YouTube channel GMS North Carolina 777 to show just how close we are to our salvation, Akim. With each passing day, there's just been an uptick in chariot sightings all across the planet. Brothers see them, average people see them, and it's getting so uh, prevalent out here that these different governments around the world are having to admit to their existence and create a task forces, task forces and uh, different organizations to study the UFOs and try to determine what they are. But best believe that the elites the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, DuPonts, Gettys, Merovingians, you name it, know exactly what they are. The chariots of the Most High, and they know exactly what they're coming to doing. Hence, why you're seeing these different heathen governments come up with these space forces. It's not to shoot down Russian or Chinese satellites. It's to fight against Yahawashai, Hamashayak, and uh, the hosts of heaven that he's coming with. But it's going to be a first round knockout. No contest. And the title of this video is... The Lord of Sabaoth, NASA live feed shut down the cameras. And as we'll see in this clip, the ISS or the International Space Station had cameras in space and they caught so many chariots on it that they had to cut the feed. But soon you won't be able to cut the feed. These chariots are going to be out here and in your face making war against you heathens and also, again, saving the elect of the nation of Israel. But this is a beautiful video, Akim. The chariots come in uh, many different sizes, as we'll see. You see what the fuck I'm telling you guys? I'm not fucking playing. Look at this horn. Smaller it's a one. From the NASA space station, live fucking feed. Excuse my language. Oh, oh my gosh. Getting bigger. Look. What the hell's going on? Holy fuck. NASA space station looking out to the stars. Oh my, that's a fucking massive ship. That's a massive fucking spaceship, look. Oh my God, there's another one flying up there. I can't even see it. Oh, oh, look at, there's another one. There's whole fucking fleets of them. Look at another one right there. Oh fuck, something's going on. Something's going on, guys, look at that shit. I'm not fucking kidding you. Oh my god, look! Look! Oh fuck, it stopped. Holy fuck. You guys, what the fuck? Can somebody explain this to me right now. This is on the Roku app. A Roku fucking TV. These are the live fucking feeds. These are fucking fleets of aliens. They're staring at fucking space. This is Psalms 68, verse 17. The chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place, an innumerable fleet of chariots that are about to come and save the elect of the nation of Israel, as well as make war against you heathen nations. I did a video a couple of months showing uh, a, a clip in it of this Edomite woman 
who observes uh, space footage like this, and the footage he was showing showed that the Earth was pretty much surrounded by chariots. Just wait, it gets better. They're like fucking invisible. I'm sorry, I mean, from outer space, this is space. Look at the NASA International Space Station HD live feed, courtesy of NASA. Father ships. The angels of the Most High, uh, the chariots of the Most High, are twenty thousand, even thousands of angels. How was shine that angels don't look like little green men? They look like so called Negroes with woolly afros and beards. White woolly afros and beards. Oh, look at they stopped it. They stopped it. Something's the whole shit. They fucking stopped this shit. The video from Space Station External High Definition Camera has been interrupted. Due to loss of signal. How the hell was that loss of signal? There hey, point blank period. And like I said earlier, there's going to come a point to where you won't be able to just uh, turn off the live feeds. These chariots are going to be here and in your face again to save the elect of the nation of Israel and make war against you heathen nations, chiefly you Edomites. Now let's get back into these precepts. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 1. I'm going to start at verse 1. The revelation of Yahawashai Hamashayak. The revelation or revealing of Yahawashai Hamashayak, which the Most High gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And we're living in the last seconds of these last days when these things are about to come to pass. All the end time signs Yahawashai Hamashayak told his disciples to look for in Matthew chapter 24 to know that his second coming was nigh and that the kingdom of heaven was at hand, as well as the end of these heathen rulerships are either in the process of taking place or taking place as we speak. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And clouds can be synonymous with the chariots in the scriptures, as it says in Psalms 104, who maketh the clouds his chariots, and every eye shall see him. Yahweh is returning in a, in a chariot so massive that as Ezra said in 2nd Ezra 13, he couldn't see the end of it. Think about the movie Independence Day with those miles long spaceships. And if you also remember in Independence Day, when those UFOs started coming into Earth's atmosphere, they were in a fiery cloud before they broke out of it. And also, in that movie, when the chariots showed up, what did you see? All these different people stopped what they're doing and looking up at the chariots, and every eye shall see him. And they also, which pierced him, which proves that reincarnation is biblical because those centurions in the past that pierced Yahweh Shai on the cross are back here today to receive their judgment from him. And all kindreds or nations of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, Amon. And the reason all kindreds of the earth are going to wail because of him is because he's coming to bring great wrath. As it says in Amos chapter 5 and Joel chapter 2, the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. The day of the Lord is darkness and gloominess. This is Revelation chapter 19. I'm going to start at verse 11. And the header reads, The coming of Hamashayak. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. Also speaking of that massive fathership chariot that Yahweh is going to return in. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Speaking of Yahweh Shai Hamashayak, 
and in righteousness he doth judge and make war, make war against you heathen nations. And this is also the war in heaven talked about in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, which symbolizes Yahawashai taking away the rulership of these heathen nations. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, symbolic of the mass death and destruction Yahawashai is bringing chiefly against you Edomites. And you can precept this verse with uh, Isaiah chapter 63, where it says, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? And his name is called the word of the Most High. And as it says in the first chapter of John, Yahawashai was the word of the Most High made flesh. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, fleets of chariots returning with Yahawashai. As we saw in that clip, multiple chariots being caught on the ISS live feed. The chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth go with a sharp sword. And this is symbolic for that concentrated heat or so-called laser beams that are going to be fired from the chariots. And back in Independence Day, when those ships shot their laser beams, how did they do it? The bottom of the ship opened up like a mouth and shot out those beams that with it, he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Speaking of slavery, because after Yahawashai makes a second coming and saves his elect, Yahawashai and the 144,000 are going to begin enslaving you heathen nations to serve for a thousand years, for the first thousand years in the kingdom of heaven. And the first fruits of slavery are going to be you elites, you Rothschilds, Rockefellers, DuPonts, Gettys, you uh, presidents, prime ministers, sheiks, billionaires, etc., etc. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the Almighty God. And I'm going to go to Second Esdras chapter 13 in the Apocrypha. And I'm going to start at verse 5. Like I said a little bit earlier, the chariot that Yahawashai is returning in was so massive that Esdras couldn't see the end of it. And after this, I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven, from the ends of the earth to subdue the man that came out of the sea. Yahawashai Hamashayak coming out of uh, the Shemayim or the waters. And this is referring to Yahawashai coming out of space or that second heaven into the first heaven, the regular sky. And uh, these multitude of men out of number gathered from the four winds of heaven are going to be gathered down into the Middle Eastern, into that Middle Eastern region for the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the War of Armageddon. And in the midst of that battle with them fighting each other, that's when Yahawashai is going to make his second coming. But I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven and I could not back in that clip you guys don't believe in aliens what the hell is this what is this i don't know what this is what what the hell? what the fuck is that there's something going on here guys and the chariot that yahawashai is returning in personally is going to be bigger than the earth because you got to think about it Simultaneously, while Yahawashai is going to be fighting these heathens in the Middle East, he's also going to be beaming up the elect in Babylon the Great, the United States of America, as well as in all the other places they're dwelling on the face of the earth. And I've done a couple of videos in the past showing that these uh, space feeds have caught so-called unidentified flying objects, really the chariots passing over earth or passing by the sun, which were bigger than the earth. And after this, I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and yet durst fight. Like I just said, in the midst of these heathens fighting each other in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, when Yahawashai returns, they're going to stop fighting each other and try to fight against Yahawashai. And lo, 
As he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth, as it had been, a blast of fire, those swords out of his mouth back in Revelation chapter 19, that concentrated heat, so-called laser beams being fired from the chariots, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests, and all they were mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burn them up, every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke, a first round knockout, no contest. And uh, a good visualization of this is that movie War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise, when those people got hit by the laser beams, what did they turn into? Piles of dust and smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. So we covered that the chariots that Yahweh's were turning in are going to be making war against the heathen nations. And like I've also been saying throughout the video, the other thing they're coming to do is save the elect of the nation of Israel. So to you sincere Akim and Akwat out there, don't be afraid when you see this uptick in chariot sightings all across the planet. They're the vehicle, vehicles of our salvation, and they let us know that our salvation is near than when we believed. But as for you heathens, they're the vehicles of your judgment and punishment. This is Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 1 to 2. Hear ye the word which Yahweh speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, which is uh, plain. If you've woken up to the fact that you're an Israelite, you should be taking yourself out of this world as much as you can, not following after the ways of these heathens, but doing your best to follow after the ways of your power, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, and our forefathers, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. These chariot sightings, blood moons, lunar eclipses, solar eclipses, etc., etc., for the heathen are dismayed at them. Hey, all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. These chariots are a sign of you heathens' destruction and the end of your rulership. But to us, Akim, they're the signs of our salvation. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 16 to 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and him that sat upon it was called Faithful and True, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of the Most High, and the dead in Hamashayat shall rise first, speaking of the elect that died on this side, whether of natural causes or had to be martyrs for the truth. Hey, they're going to be the first ones on the chariot waiting for the rest of the elect. As it says in verse 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, in the chariots, getting beamed up into the chariots to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hey, when Yahweh Shai comes, that's the end of it. The kingdom of heaven is established, and uh, we're going to be at peace for the rest of eternity with you heathen nations underneath us. And a real quick precept for verses 16 to 17 is Matthew 24, verses 29 to 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, speaking of those nuclear missiles that are going to be shot to the ends of the earth during World War III. After the Karagma, the RFID slash NFC, M-I-C-R-O-C-H-I-P-I-M-P-L-A-N-T, the mark of the B-E-A-S-T in Revelation 13 verses 16 to 18 is mandatorily implemented. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all it's like, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, hey, all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, because he's coming to bring war against you heathens, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, that white horse. That mountain that he graved for himself in 2nd Esdras 13 that Esdras couldn't see the end of because it was so massive. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, 
the 144,000 and the rest of the righteous one third from the four winds, from one corner of the earth even unto the other, from one end of heaven to the other, the elect getting beamed up into the chariots, caught up into the clouds to be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, which is exactly what we're doing with these video epistles, as well as going on out onto the highways and byways preaching that our salvation is at hand. Our captivity is almost over, Akiam. So with this video, I hope you sincere Akiam and Akwath were edified. And as always, I'm going to say a bad babal, kwam yasharala, and until next time, shalom.